Hey guys, welcome to the channel Scuba Travel and Adventure. Thomas here. Today is a little bit different video. It's not about motorcycles. It's not about scuba diving, but uh, basically I'll be talking about the action cameras. Uh, if you want to film your motorcycle rides, um, I just discovered recently uh, there's a different option than a GoPro, which uh, as you know, uh, if you want to vlog or if you want to do any narration when you're riding a motorcycle with a GoPro, you need that big bulky adapter. So I, I will include the picture of that uh, later. So there's no way around it without it, unless you get the vlogging case that that's a possible uh, another option. But uh, I found it that this is much cleaner just to mount it behind her. I have a video on that. If you want to check, uh, check it out. How is that mounted on here? Uh, you can browse through my playlist and you'll find it. Uh, you'll find a video how I mounted the GoPro on my uh, Schubert uh, C3 helmet. What I discovered recently, uh, the camera has been on the market for quite some time, actually, but I haven't had a chance to go around it. Um, I just bump into this uh, like a month ago. So basically it's a modular action camera. So this camera here, um, it's uh, Insta360 ONE R and uh, they come in a lot of different configurations. Uh, the most common uh, configuration you can buy is the ONE uh, R Twin Edition. So what it means Twin Edition? Basically uh, that camera is modular and it will come with two different mods. So the first mod, which is the, probably the most interesting, is the 360 mod. And that mod has lens on both sides. So it, it will take 360 video, which are actually very cool. Um, the positioning on that camera doesn't matter how you face it. You, you can rotate the video 360 degrees and uh, you can get pretty amazing shots. The other mod is your regular 4K mode, which is uh, very similar to GoPro Hero cameras. You can quickly actually switch it between the different mods that you want to use. So as you see here, the camera basically comes with three different components. You get your battery base. This is the basic battery, which is uh, pretty standard. That's what, the, what, that's what you will get when you buy that. Then you have your mod, which is the screen and your 4K mod and the 360 mod. So those are the components that you're gonna get. And with that, you will also get your cage if you want to use it um, to mount it on a helmet or on your selfie stick or whichever you're gonna use. With the 4K mode, the screen on this camera, you can put it either this way, that would be for vlogging, or you can turn it around and then you have the screen facing backwards. So as you see how quickly that uh, you can change that. And then of course uh, you get your battery base that simply just clips on. And the camera is assembled. So nice and easy. And the display, it's a little bit smaller than what you find on your, on your GoPro, but the app that comes with it, it's uh, if you want to do a quick short video to edit on a mobile device, it's super easy and you can accomplish pretty interesting shots uh, with the app without being even a skilled um, videographer or uh, running any Final Cut Pro or DaVinci, nothing like that. Straight out of the camera, download it to your phone and you can post it uh, either to your Facebook or Instagram or YouTube uh, quick videos. Turn it off, I accidentally turned it on. So disconnect the battery 
and then pull the brain and if you want to get the 360 camera basically same idea just put them together like this and then attach your base and now you have your 360 camera one lens on that side one lens on that uh, on this side so if you want to get a pretty interesting footage you can get a motorcycle kit and that has a little uh, extension that you can mount it on top of your helmet with this view pointing that way you can have like a 360 video and you can have yourself on a motorcycle from the top view it will look so, sort of like uh, somebody would follow you with the drone uh, i tested it i made some videos so you should be able to find some of those videos on my channel and there's a lot of other videos i will not go on the details and specs of this camera because uh, there's a lot of other videos uh, that you can find online regarding this camera here uh, i just want to show you how it looks uh, in a motorcycle world and what are the components uh, for that camera so on top of those batteries you can get uh, what insta360 is calling it's a boosted battery. With this battery, it's very similar idea as a GoPro mounting. So it's got those magnetic mounts right here and they fold out. So now you attach that big boy and you have the double power of uh, the original small battery. Um, I'm pretty amazed uh, with the quality and the versatility of this uh, little camera now i want to show you what's the real reason why i wanted to try this camera uh, for all of you that uh, you be doing any vlogs or if you want to hook up your microphone inside the helmet for a camera this is it this is the adapter for this camera it is super tiny and on the back you have your microphone jack i'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that it's kind of probably hard there we go so and this is a usb type c you plug that in on your on the side of of the camera and that's all it is i will show you in comparison this is your microphone adapter for the gopro and the insta360 it's basically the size of the end of the connector of the gopro adapter that's how big that is so let me show you how that will look uh, on your uh, helmet if you mount it so you gotta use the frame if you're mounting without the boosted battery because if you're using the boosted battery you don't need the frame but the frame has the actual mounting point that little side door it's a little bit pain in the butt to get it opened that's uh, one one thing i find a little bit annoying on this because it's so tiny but uh, once you keep it open it stays open <laughs> all right so this is all you're gonna have when you have the insta360 mounted and you will not be disappointed with the image quality from this camera there is basically only one thing that i don't like as much about the camera but that goes only when you're using the 360 mod uh, basically you have to import all the footage either to your phone app or you have to input all the all the footage into insta360 studio on a computer and stabilize this and stitch it in a 360 uh, mod and then you can have the footage that's workable in your editing software such as final cut or davinci resolve or adobe premiere whichever software you're using um, from those cameras you can use the footage uh, directly but i still run it through the insta360 software this way it stabilizes this perfectly so you get nice stabilized footage and also you can do a little bit color color boost on that uh, when you're shooting so after this demonstration here i'm gonna show you a video 
riding my motorcycle and using this uh, microphone adapter and the microphone inside and also you'll see the footage so that footage will be stabilized and after this I'm gonna run some comparisons I just gonna walk around uh, in a park behind my house and uh, you will see a different quality that the camera is outputting so there is one more addition that you can add to this camera which is Leica one inch mod so this sensor has a this is a, this action camera has a one inch sensor so there, there's no action camera that would have the capability of capture as uh, this sensor uh, with the Leica mod uh, because the sensor here is so much bigger so it captures so much more details and the picture quality is so much nicer especially when you want to film in a darker environment when you're riding in the evening depth of field is going to be so much nicer with this sensor so that's why I didn't cover I wanted to show you that so I was uh, really that impressed so I sold it because before I was using two different GoPros I was using one GoPro that was always mounted on my helmet and then the other GoPro I used to use it mounted on a different places uh, on a motorcycle when I was filming whether it was facing myself or on the side to get a different shot but uh, I was really impressed with the first camera that I bought and after I sold my GoPro so this one here I got second hand on marketplace and uh, I was so impressed with the twin pack that I wanted to get one more uh, just so I don't have to disconnect all the cameras I can always have the extra camera and uh, use it uh, for a different type of shots without uh, removing it from my helmet so I hope you find that video helpful if you did uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i'll try to come up always with something new and see you in the next video today is just a ride to test my uh, new insta 360 one r action cam that i have recently purchased and that is with the 4k the 4k mode the previous uh, couple of rides i did they were with uh, the 360 view that i was actually kind of impressed today i am testing the 4k mode uh, i want to see how is that gonna perform uh, on a helmet uh, the reason why i want to try that uh, because of the um, configuration on a GoPro with that external mic adapter uh, there is uh, so much going on on the helmet and uh, this one here is basically just a little jack uh, USB type C that goes into the USB type C slot on your camera and then uh, the camera plugs into that jack so it's uh, super tiny it's uh, basically the size of the connector itself on a GoPro mic adapter and also the price of it it's uh, I think that was like uh, $14 on uh, AliExpress or eBay you can get those I've seen it as high as 24 but uh, also here in Calgary I can buy them at uh, or order them from Vision Electronics and they have them also on sale right now for $14 so that is a no-brainer because the GoPro mic adapter it's gonna cost you I, I, I if I remember correctly it was like $69 uh, that's uh, that's insane for the mic adapter or you have to buy the um, vlogging case for a GoPro which is uh, even more expensive that's gonna run you about 100 bucks and uh, the GoPro is overheating there's a lot of things going on uh, I'll see if I can get away with uh, recording with the Insta360 cameras I already sold one of my GoPros and uh, I'll keep my other one uh, just uh, because I have so much accessories for it and I might as well keep one and uh, add the Insta360 to the setup. So I have pretty much uh, mounted everything the same way as I did uh, with the GoPro. Uh, 
because uh, it's using the same attachments and the same mounting brackets except uh, no uh, GoPro mic adapter that bulky thing is gone off the helmet I wonder how is that audio going to sound so I'm doing this just uh, as I'm heading out uh, to the store I'm not going anywhere on any spectacular ride today uh, just uh, run through the city or across the city to a next town uh, Airdrie so you'll see how is this camera performing uh, if you're thinking of uh, upgrading yourself oh shoot I think I missed my turn or I did not yet no I'm still good I thought I missed my turn I'm gonna go take a Deerfoot trail instead of uh, Stony. so I just want to say that uh, this uh, section here of the video I'm uh, recording at uh, 1080p at uh, 30 frames per second that's uh, normally what I'm using to record on my GoPro uh, sometimes I will bump the frame rate to 60 frames per second and uh, I will do that actually um, after I pull over the store I'll switch over the settings on the camera and I will bump it up to 2.7K uh, and uh, I'll do also 30 frames per second and then uh, maybe I will try the 4K at 30 frames per second uh, that I don't use usually anything higher than uh, 1080p that's uh, more than enough uh, it was more than enough uh, on a GoPro uh, when I was recording with the GoPro resolution it was just perfectly fine uh, the footage was okay but uh, this one here, I want to try uh, all the different mode and uh, see how is the stabilization and also how it is performing overall comparing to the GoPro. What I don't like about this camera so far, I've been using the 360 mode for a couple weeks now. Uh, it, is, it is very impressive footage and uh, it's pretty much like having somebody uh, following you on a bike uh, with the drone uh, just beside you because you can in uh, post-production or post-edit uh, you can uh, just uh, view the different angles of uh, of rider or the sceneries around you. I was experimenting a little bit uh, with the options like the tiny planet and and uh, all the different options. Uh, they look okay if you do it once in a while but I noticed in one of my videos I started playing with it too much and even myself when I'm watching it I'm not impressed with it. Uh, that's kind of annoying uh, but it is a pretty cool feature um, to, to have and to be able to do that. So another big thing, um, the most important big thing that I don't like about um, the Insta360 editing since I'm using the Final Cut Pro on a Mac uh, and I think that's gonna go pretty much the same thing on a PC anyways because uh, the 360 mod for example it outputs a file that, uh, that you can only pretty much open in uh, 360 Insta360 Studio and uh, basically there is an additional step involved for uh, stitching uh, the footage uh, from the 360 camera view and also uh, to, um, to apply the stabilization the GoPro calls it hyper smooth and uh, here I, on the Insta360 it's called uh, flow state or something like that so uh, that has to be uh, exported through the Insta360 Studio and then you can import your footage to Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere whatever you are working with using the 4K mode it's not really it might be not really necessary i'm not because there's an in-camera stabilization as well i'm not sure how well that will look i will see after after this ride how well that footage is going to look without applying additional because you can actually bump that stabilization uh, even in a 4k mode to to make it look a little bit more better but uh, I want to see before and after results uh, in the editing. The GoPro was nice because uh, the camera uh, 
spit out the footage uh, directly to Final Cut Pro and uh, you are done. And um, another thing that what comes to my mind at this point, um, after you export the files from Insta360 Studio, uh, the files uh, lose their correct uh, capture time and date, which is super, super annoying because then uh, you have to look for that footage, uh, which order it was recorded in, in uh, Final Cut Pro. So basically you just have to be paying attention to the actual file numbers uh, or file number names, unless you're gonna feel and uh, individually name all the files in Insta360 Studio one by one, then uh, that would keep the track, but that's uh, even longer um, editing workflow. Uh, to me, that is stupid. Uh, why company uh, releasing a competitor uh, action, action camera to GoPro, uh, even though there is that extra step required, now you're losing your file uh, capture time and date. Uh, that is super, super annoying. I changed the settings on the camera and I will see you guys in the 2.7K uh, and uh, 30 frames per second, uh, 16 by 9 format I'll be using. Um, you can use Linear, but uh, I still think that for a motorcycle ride, the uh, wide format is uh, better. You can make it like super wide, but that's already making everything uh, fisheye view, and I don't like that. Uh, some people enjoy that stuff. Uh, fisheye view is okay when I use that um, on a camera when I'm scuba diving. Because basically once you're in the water, the fisheye effect sort of disappears for some reason. It doesn't show up, so I can shoot a super wide angle and I don't have that uh, oval fisheye view look. Alright guys, so I switched over to 2.7K, 16 by 9, 30 frames per second and uh, I'm pretty curious if there's much of a difference in the uh, quality of this content at all. Okay, and uh, 30 frames per second. So that should, um, that might be slightly different because of the sun uh, position at this time. Uh, it happened so quickly basically as soon as I switched over to uh, the different resolution. I, uh, I, I have to deal with the sun in front of me instead of uh, in the back like in the previous shots. Maybe I'll go here behind the truck, beside the truck and that will be slightly better. Yeah, we don't have that much of a sun there at this point. So this is how the 4K looks like on uh, Insta 361R. A couple tests now uh, on a one inch Leica sensor. I will show you some of them with the raw footage uh, that has no flow state stabilization applied. So flow state, something that uh, Insta 361R is uh, comparing to uh, Hypersmooth on a GoPro. So I will do the, all the different uh, settings on this camera uh, with the flow state and then uh, also I will do them first uh, before the flow state you'll see straight out of the camera as a raw files uh, straight out of the camera because this the camera also as I mentioned uh, on my uh, motorcycle video that uh, it has a in, uh, in camera stabilization as well but apparently it's not as good. So I will run all the settings on a Leica mode, one inch sensor and then I'll do the same thing on a 4K mode. So let's do this now. So that's hold, holding it uh, freehand on a selfie stick and I will do a close-up as well on a tree. So this is uh, 30 frames per second, 16 by nine. Uh, 1080p so 
now the same story 2.7k 30 frames per second 16 by 9 format And again, I will do the close-up. So now we have uh, 30 frames per second, 4K, 16 by 9. A bit crispy morning, see the white stuff is coming on the ground and close up again on that same tree. Now, this is the highest resolution 16 by 9, 5.3k, 30 frames per second. The reason why I'm doing 30 frames per second because uh, most of my videos, at least in my case, I'm editing in 30 frames per second unless I want to do some slow motion, I will change the settings, but that doesn't happen too often. Most of my mo um, uh, videos are motorcycle videos, so I will do very rarely the slow motion, but uh, that gives you an idea in the most common 30 frames per second because there's a lot of other videos that will cover uh, more details of this camera and again here we have the close-up uh, on that same tree So if you want to find some more details about this camera, there's a lot of uh, other reviews. I just want to bring that up because this is a camera that's kind of overlooked. Uh, everybody's going for the GoPro and uh, this camera, I think, has so much more potential over the GoPro. Uh, I really like it so far. I've been using it, uh, the 360 mode, for quite some time in few of my other videos. So now I will switch over to the 4K mode, mode uh, just the basic mode that the camera comes with. Okay, so now I switched over to a uh, regular the twin pack edition 4K mode and I'll run the same test. Uh, the first one is again 1080p, 16x9, 30 frames per second. And I'm just doing normal walking, I'm not running here or nothing. It's uh, going down the hill and then up the hill, bring the close up on the tree. So that gives, that gives you a different uh, perspective versus the one in sensor. <laughs> now we have a 2.7K. 16 by 9, 30 frames per second. I get my morning exercise, all right. Walking back and forth. I still see the moon in the background. Not sure that's going to be visible on the camera. But it's 9 o'clock in the morning or so. And again, close up on that tree. I'll go slowly back and forth. Okay, now we have uh, 4K, 16 by 9, 30 frames per second. I don't use the higher resolution because uh, the files get so big and especially when I'm on a longer trips um, later to edit the oldest content 
it would take me hours even though I have a, a last year model of the map I noticed when I'm working with those big files it, uh, it takes uh, way longer to edit all the content and again we're gonna bring that up on the tree <coughs> Get a little bit of shadow because I'm blocking the sun here. 